Hey everybody, this is Jamie from The Modern Tog. Today I have Nate Grahek with us from Sticky Albums, the founder of Sticky Albums. Uh, and we are going to be talking about um, shoot and burn versus shoot and share a little bit. Um, basically, before we get started, I want to introduce um, a little bit more in detail what we are going to be talking about, what we aren't going to be talking about. Um, we aren't going to be just sitting here bashing products today, um, even though some of you think that might be the case. Um, sorry. But we are going to be talking about um, how do we run a profitable and sustainable photography business in an age where everyone is tied to their mobile devices and wants digital images, and yet we still need to make money because this is a business. Mm -hmm. um, and so how do we best do that? And how do we um, do that without making our bottom line disappear? So, um, Nate, I want you, if you don't mind, to share a little bit about yourself. So, yeah, Absolutely. Jamie, thank you so much for uh, adding your voice to the conversation. I think that you've definitely stirred the pot here, and I think it's all really good conversation for, for us in the industry to be having. Um, so thanks for having me on. Uh, I started shooting photography professionally, I would say, five or six years ago. Uh, I feel like I, I had a, a pretty typical story I, uh, get coming into the industry where I was just loving taking p portraits of friends and family and they eventually were like, Nate, you could get paid for this. I was no way, no way. And then I stumbled across uh, Zenfolio and was like, wow, I was so excited with the idea that I could just focus on taking pictures and then selling them online. Like all, all I have to do is like put them online, set my prices, and then I'm going to make a bunch of money. <laughs> and it was so... I fell in love with that idea that I could just continue to geek out about gear and lenses and flash and learning my, this awesome art and the business would just take care of itself. Well, I very quickly learned that that wasn't the case. I, I, I was averaging like a few, couple hundred dollars, three hundred dollars on print sales when I, when I simply just emailed somebody the link to mm -hmm. place their order online. It just didn't happen and I've really enjoyed learning the business side of photography, um, starting starting uh, sticky albums, as well as having conversation after conversation with real full-time photographers uh, across the country, and even part-time photographers who are kicking ass, really adding revenue to their bottom line at the same time of, of living their passion and doing a job that they love. So thanks again for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I'm I'm curious, how did um, so Nate has a product called Sticky Albums, and this is not just going to be a commercial for his product either. So don't worry, guys. No. Um, but I'm I'm curious how you moved. Like, what made you decide that you needed to get something on mobile? Yeah, like, why is I that think, important? It 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 was a kind of a scratch your own itch type of thing where I was making custom business cards for my high school models. And mm -hmm. finally, I had my own cousin. She was the one willing to be honest enough with me and says, I just don't like having these, like, my friends and I don't like having paper in our pockets. But, like, they go everywhere with their phones. And so I was like, well, what if, would it be cool if I made you, like, a custom app for you to save some of the pictures on your phone to show your friends? And she's like, that would be awesome. And so I just started making them manually. I had, my background is in, uh, at, online education and so I had learned how to put uh, simple content onto mobile devices. And so I started making these things by hand and right away based on the reactions of uh, my, cu my photography customers I started sharing it with photographers and they're like dude you're onto something this is really big and fast forward a year and a half we've made sticky albums so that everybody can do that but it was mostly about wanting to give my audience, my, my customers, a really easy way to share their pictures in mm -hmm. a way that promoted my business because they weren't sharing business cards anymore. And it was a lot of work to make them. And I was making the accordion albums sometimes. And those, I love the ones with the magnets. They stick on the fridge. I thought they were great. But my clients just didn't make the effort to carry it with them all the time the way they would a phone. Mm -hmm. So, out of curiosity, um, did you ever do in-person sales, or did you just give digital images, or how does what does your background look like for that? Yeah, right. Good question. I, I never made that leap. I think the I started to learn pretty quickly how 
much money I was losing on the, and leaving on the table. And so the, the first step was to have uh, a lot of my clients were so busy. I was working a day job while I was shooting photography. We would do on the phone consultations where I would walk them through mm -hmm. the interface, mm -hmm. give them an example of some of the products they could order. And that alone had huge impact on the sales that were made. And I started to learn gradually how people, consumers don't know all of the products there are. They don't understand what a metal print is or a canvas. Like they have an idea, but they really don't know until somebody really holds their hand and educates them on what's available and how they go about ordering them. And then I was a super rookie in set, like communicating that an 8x10 is not that big of a print. It's not going to look good above the mantle when somebody buys an 8x10. And that's just, that comes with taking the time to learn, uh, A, what's out there. I think that's the biggest hurdle for me is I myself, when I started very rookie, I didn't know all the products myself. And so I think it's, A, it's scary to sell, that there's something about selling your own art that's scary. And I avoided it. And then as I learned more about the products that were there, I was kind of intimidated by how much there was to know and teach other people. But as I learned it and then shared it with my clients, it directly impacted my bottom line. Right. And I saw something similar to when I was um, doing more portraits because um, what when I first started my photography business, I was also working a full-time job, which is very common because it takes a while to get your photography business to a point where you can leave a full-time job and actually make a living off of it. Yeah, right. um, and so what I found was... Um, I just, I just basically said I didn't have time to do in-person sales, and so I do an online gallery, uh, and I just, my average was really low. I think I averaged like 350 a session, mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't until we decided that we wanted to get serious about going full-time, mm -hmm. and I looked at the numbers and figured out exactly how much I would need to be making for a portrait session, um, mm -hmm. which was way higher than I had ever made, um, that I sat down and said, okay, what do I really need to do if I want to make money doing this so that I can mm -hmm. leave behind my snot, boring as snot, like, ah, job, corporate job. <laughs> I mean, it paid well. It was, it was, it was, you know, it had great colleagues, but it was, it was not mind-numbingly dull. Right. Uh, and I, I could not wait to leave it. And so right. um, I had to get serious about it. And, you know, I was, I've always wanted to be somebody who changed with the times and stayed ahead, one step ahead of the game instead of like looking back and saying, oh, it used to be good and, you know, whatever. Uh, but um, what I realized is that um, in-person sales is the way to go, not because it's like the old school model or whatever and it's not price gouging, uh, mm -hmm. because people aren't paying for just that piece of paper right. with your image on it. Um, when they go to a professional photographer, they're paying for your expertise, for right. your artistic vision, uh, for service. And that was the one that I didn't realize. Um, because, you know, I was, I was afraid I would be salesy and, you know, whatever else. Right. And a lot, a lot of the people that I worked with when I was, you know, working full time were people I knew. I wasn't really seeking yeah. out too many clients outside of my, you know, current um, base of people I already knew. And so they were colleagues or friends and, you know, part of me was scared to try and sell them something. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I finally jumped into doing in-person sales, uh, I was shocked at the amazing response that I actually got mm -hmm. because um, people were thankful that I was willing to actually help them pick out which image was best because sometimes they don't even know, like, would this be better or would this be better? And then but also, like, how to best display or use those images to accomplish what they wanted to accomplish. Right. So, right. you know, I mean, everyone, like you said, everyone has their phones, and they've all got cameras in them, so they're not, they can get a digital image in a moment, and almost at any moment, because yeah. they can do it themselves. Right. So they're not just buying a digital image, they want, you know, the whole package, the whole experience, uh, and they want your expertise. And if you're not doing in-person sales, or at least walking them through like you were, you know, they don't know that an 8x10 is a small print. You know, right. they think that that's going to look great over the mantle because yep. that's what they've been told. So right. um, so my, my story is similar, and, you know, our average, I mean, and everyone's results are different, but our average went from about 350 per portrait session to about 1250 per portrait session the moment we went to in-person sales. And, you know, not everyone has the exact same results, but, you know, I know a lot of people in our Facebook group have, 
shared time and time again about how switching to in-person sales has been huge for them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's great. But at the same time, people still want digital images. So right. how do we how do we balance this, Nate? What, what do you suggest? Yeah, good. I, I really like that, that breakdown. And I, I want to talk about how do you use digital the best way and how to have that conversation. I think but I also want to touch on just the fear factor. Like starting a new business is scary mm -hmm. and charging money is scary. And so a lot of times we will will take the easiest answer sometimes. Like we'll like, yeah, that works. I'm gonna run with that. Where I took the Zenfolio model and I was like, oh wow, this is safe. I don't have to, I, st I can sell stuff, but I don't have to have that awkward in-person like salesy conversation. And that's not what I ended up doing and that's not what you're doing when you do in-person sales. It's just making the time and that's the other thing is people say like, well, I don't have enough time. You do if you're making four grand an hour. Like I'm, I think you can make, you can carve out an hour of your time to do that or whatever it is. And I think that when you spend that time with your client, one of the coolest experiences was my wife and I finally hired a professional photographer of family portraits. And she was just incredible. Like all of the work she did before the shoot blew me away. I was like, oh my gosh, I was totally underserving my own clients where I would just do a couple emails and a phone call and then show up at the place. Like, oh my God, I was leaving such an opportunity to make a better impression and to, to be there in service for my customers. Uh, so that's, anyway, being in service is so huge and it's not about really even selling. There's a book called A Trusted Advisor and I think that that's what people, that's what consumers are looking for. They want to buy from people they trust and that will walk them through and give them advice on what they, what, what's the right thing for them to get. And if they don't have that, they're just, there's this analysis paralysis. Yes, they can do all of these things themselves online, but we all know it doesn't happen because they're, they're, they've got day jobs themselves. They don't have time to go through and do all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, uh, moving on to the next point, what, how do you use and leverage digital? I think that, especially in wedding photography, I've talked to a lot of our members and they say that every day they get phone calls from brides saying, uh, do you offer the digital negatives? Mm -hmm. It's like the first question I ask, whether they read it in a magazine. This is like the, this is the, you call a photographer and this is the first thing you're supposed to ask them. And I think that instead of being so turned off by it or scared by it, I think it's an opportunity to have a deeper conversation just by simply asking why or tell me more about what you want to do with your images. Oh, I want to be able to share them on Facebook or I want to be able to put them on my mobile device. Or I want to make a book. And then all of a sudden you're having a conversation instead of this, oh, we don't do that. It's like, oh, okay, well, explore and understand more about what, what your clients are motivated by so that you can better service them. Mm -hmm. um, so how to use them? Let's see. And I've how always do you use them without, without losing all of your income too? Like that's yes. key for, yeah, go for it. Sorry. I, no, it's, it's, I think that I... I personally, I used to do sneak peeks, and I think that's still pretty popular. Where if you you can uh, release like a couple of your best shots on the blog to create some buzz and them sharing it, but over and over again, I found that that can backfire. Where it, some of the where you're like you're wasting a lot of your the reveal. Like if you watch any of the, I'm reminded of like all the reality shows that do like home makeovers and stuff. The reveal is the biggest thing. Like that's mm -hmm. that's why everybody watches the show is for that last minute. And if you show that stuff, if you show your pictures too soon on digital, one we all know that as soon as it's on a screen, people can swipe it. And there's we we go all over the place trying to prevent people from taking our images. We just have to let go of that. I think once it's on a screen, somebody can take their phone and take a picture of the screen. Like there's. There's no technology that's going to ever prevent that. So if it's really going to mess up your business model, just don't do it. Don't show any digitals until you've accepted payment. And it, tur it turns out it's a really great incentive. So however you decide to fall on this huge issue is if you offer them or not, just don't offer them until uh, you've accepted full payment. Mm -hmm. and, and then I think that once they start using them, People start stressing out about, oh, well, then I don't get as much. Like, 
a lot of people make a bunch of money over the holidays with reprints. And then they say, well, if I start giving away the images, then I'm giving up that much revenue. You need to then balance that with how much new business are you getting because your clients are sharing, what's that worth to you? And you're attracting a, a bigger niche of client who won't hire you unless they can get the digital files. So it's always trade-offs. There is no black and white. I'm not trying to say there's a right or wrong way, but these are the, some of the strategies that I've heard are working really well for yeah. people using sticky albums. Yeah, and I've seen similar things as well. I mean, for weddings, you need to think about what do your clients really want. And I don't think that you would have an easy time with a business model that didn't offer digital images at all um, for weddings, especially because, you know, they don't necessarily want to buy a print of every candid moment, but they sure want to have a copy of it, um, maybe put them in albums, etc. And they are paying a lot of money up front for weddings. Um, as opposed to a portrait session where you may have a very small sitting fee or no sitting fee um, and include that in the packages later. Um, and it's a little different model where you pay something to make the session worth your time and if you do a good job with that and provide your service then they're willing to buy more afterwards. Right. Um, and that's, you know, they're, they're different and so uh, I think we need to treat them a little differently. So I don't, I don't do in-person sales with my wedding clients because frankly most of them are out of state mm -hmm. coming back to my state to have weddings, you know, so it's kind of like the reverse destination wedding mm -hmm. um, because that's who we market to. And so even if we wanted to do like an album thing afterwards, we'd have to find a way to do it digitally or online because we don't, you know, we do albums with all of our packages, but we don't, we can't just say, hey, stop by, you know, or let's meet at this coffee shop and we'll right. you know, go through this because, you know, they're, they're a plane right away. So mm -hmm. it's not just a black and white issue either. So, right. um, so I, I would actually like to um, kind of move into talking about um, using you know, mobile apps and various, not just sticky albums, but some of the other ones that are out there as well. Um, what, because I, I think it's a great idea. I think that it's a really great way to help share as long as it's done well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're, as long as you're charging enough for your digital images, you know, even if you're doing portrait sessions, I personally don't think it's wrong if you just want to shoot a session and give the digitals. Mm -hmm. As long as you know that you're charging enough to make your numbers, like, add up at the end because mm -hmm. a lot of people haven't actually dug into their numbers and so they think when they're making $500 for a portrait session that they're doing really well when you know honestly they're probably only bringing home 200 of that if their expenses are really low or less right. uh, after income taxes and overhead expenses and gear and business right. expenses and everything else comes into it and until you run the numbers you don't realize how much how little money you're actually mm -hmm. making. Yeah. Um, and so as long as you know, like if you know you only need to do 20 sessions a year that average, you know, $800 and you can manage to get $800 for a session and the digitals or more, then you're good. You know, there's no problems. So, yeah. um, so I'm not against, um, you know, the shoot, shoot and burn model so much. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about this, this shoot and share idea and how do we use mobile? Like, mm -hmm. how it, how should it be used? Because I know that you've thought about that a lot more than I have. Um, what are some good practices? What do we want to avoid? Um, you know, how do we decide between you know sticky albums or pass or pixie set or any of the other ones out there? Um, right. You know, shoot proof. That's another more gallery that's not mobile but is integrated with mobile. Yeah. You know, how do you how do you decide which one is right to use? And right. you know, from both a photographer standpoint, but also a client standpoint. Absolutely, yeah. So I want to preface this. I don't want to go down too far of a tangent. I won't answer your question, but I want, okay. to, I want to put some context around it too in saying I read this awesome book called The Five Elements of, of Good Thinking or Strong Thinking. Sorry, I'm forgetting the title right now. Bottom line is one of the elements is to, be, to avoid certainty in all of our decisions. So if we look at the popular press, if there's any like political leader or somebody who, who has doubt, a lot of times we see that in ourselves and other people when they have doubt as like a weakness. But I, the book talks about, and I fully believe this, is having doubt is actually a strength. It's because it's, it's scary. It's, it's not as safe where you're like, oh, I'm not sure. Whereas when we're really sure about something, it's like, check, that's done, moving on to the next. And it takes more energy to be not sure about something. And so I really try to resist in all of my own business dealings 
at strategies and all of the things I'm looking at, I want to make sure that I'm I'm looking at it from a, a non-biased perspective or, or being conscious of I know the biases that I already have and still having um, and being able to just say, you know what, I'm not 100% sure. I think I have a good idea, but I know it's not black and white. And even as I say that, I know that sounds super boring. It's not... It's not entertaining. <laughs> You're not. That's why you don't see this kind of talk on reality TV. Um, it's not going to make my Facebook go on fire. But that's how I feel. I don't. I don't believe in coming down on these concrete, black and white conclusions about how you should run your business. I'm. I'm not going to tell you that. Okay. So, so you would suggest like testing things and being absolutely. open to changing. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like yeah, absolutely. In, and just knowing that there is no such thing as a black and white. It just isn't. There's so much gray and there always are trade-offs in your market, in the type of people you're selling to, and it's just there's always gray. And, and learning to be comfortable with that will make you better at adapting to the change that is always going to be happening. As soon as we're like certain about something, that becomes like a an anchor to get, and it gets in your way of, of moving forward and adapting to change. Okay. Speaking of change, let's talk about mobile. So one of the stats I like to share is in the, the whole lifespan of Apple computer from the 80s, from they first started to 2011, they sold 126 million computers, like max, 126 million. In 2011 alone, they sold 156 million iOS devices. In one year, they sold more mobile devices than they have sold computers since the day they were born. Like it's, wow. in, it's the pace at which it's happening is something we've never seen in business. I think as photographers, we're on the leading edge of going, taking our business to the web. But even that transition, it took a while. Like we, it was fast, but it was like a five-year process of okay, now if you're a photographer, you pretty much need a website. But now the web has gone to mobile like overnight. It happened way faster than anything else has happened. And so we really need to start adapting to, in business you always talk about location, location, location. Well, guess what? Our customers are on their mobile devices. Some of them, some of our younger customers or even any, don't even have a computer anymore. There's, that's going to become an increasingly popular thing where some, but they don't even have a computer. They just have their phone or an iPad or a tablet. Um, so it's important that we're thinking about this, where our customers are and how they want to consume our content. So um, let's see. Where else should I go? Uh, what do you want to look for when you're, yeah. when you're considering mobile? Absolutely. So when we, here we go. That's I'll talk about is So in my, my old day job, uh, my job was in, in doing uh, training development, and everybody was all excited about putting training, like recordings and PowerPoints, onto iPads. We were all excited about it. And I kept pushing back, saying, guys, we can't just take what people used to do on a computer and shove it into a mobile device, because the, the user is in a totally different mindset. They're, if they're doing things in between. Like, when we sit down to do something on a computer, we're sitting down to do a dedicated thing. And then in, in between, we'll check Facebook, we'll check whatever, right? But when you're on a mobile device, we're oftentimes using this in between other things we're doing. Like, oh, we're in line getting coffee, or we're in a long line at the airport. I'm going to quick check this. Or I'm at lunch with a friend. It's, it's very condensed, which means the user has a much shorter attention span. They don't want this huge buffet of all of their images. Uh, they want to quickly be able to grab their phone, find their favorite one, and show, and talk about it with their friends and family. And so, from a technical perspective, I think that making sure, right away, I knew that having the files offline on the device made a big difference because when you opened it next time, they were there. If we've all been at a dinner party, where or wherever in public, and somebody takes their phone out, oh, I want to show you this thing. And it's like there's this unspoken like 20 second timer <laughs> that starts. And if they can't show you that thing like right away, it totally kills the conversation. And so that happens like once or twice. And that person, guess what? Next time they go to share that thing, they go, ah, never mind. I'm not going to do it. I'll send you the link later. But when they're actually able to bring it up and say, check out this picture 
I, of, of the, the, this app my photographer made for me, and it opens within 10 seconds, then there's amazing, in, they get to have a conversation about it in person and live. And I think that in-person conversation is, is invaluable. Mm -hmm. So I'll also say that from day one, if we go back to why I created Sticky Albums, it was to replace business cards. It was a marketing tool. I was looking for a better marketing tool first. And I think that's where mobile is best leveraged, is when you think about it as a marketing tool first, to get your brand out there, to get your clients sharing your work, first and foremost. And then when it comes to delivering 100 plus images to your clients, we've all had to sit through a friend of ours who gets married and posts 200 pictures on Facebook, like, or tries to show us those, like, nobody wants to look at that many pictures anymore. And especially when we're on our mobile device, like, I'm not gonna sit there and look through 200 images. One, it's gonna take too long, and two, especially if I'm, on, uh, if I'm paying for data, I'm not gonna have pay that like go have overages just because I can look at this many pictures so mm -hmm. those are a couple of things does that help yeah it does so um so we want to make you would suggest then doing a smaller number of images yeah. Yeah. for a mobile device um what about like what are some of the pros and cons of using you know mobile devices for image delivery mm -hmm. You know, like you talked a little bit about how people use them, but what about, you know, when they are, you know, you said some people don't have computers necessarily or, you know, so what about using something like that to deliver images? I think that, hmm, good question. Um, the first thing, the first point is just le less is more. I think that's one of the hardest lessons to learn as a new photographer. It, we, this tendency to do a portfolio, like your online portfolio is like, oh my God, I want to make sure they know I can do all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I've got like 100 images or 50 images in your portfolio. And I found like when you start looking around the web at some of the industry leaders and some of the awesome photographers, it's almost I found that like the, the bigger, the more well-known a photographer is, the fewer images they have in their portfolio. Like some of them only have like four. <laughs> Like, how do you get away with four pictures? But guess what? We all know those four pictures. Uh, and so I think that concept can definitely be applied, one, from a technical perspective, but also it's a psychological perspective where less is more when you pick your very, very best work and say, this is me. This is the kind of work I want to do more of. It's going to stick out. And when you, also, when you're thinking about the psychology of marketing, you want the people looking at your work to be left with, oh, I want to see more of those. Those are amazing. I want to see more. Like that, you want them to actually have tension about, oh, there's not more, because that's good. Because that's that, then they're going to come to you and they're going to talk to you. Whereas if they're looking at 200 and they're going, yeah, these are amazing. Okay, that one looks like the last one. Oh, and here's another angle of her kit, the kiss, or that's cool, but I'm now I'm full. I'm bored. I'm on to the next thing, right? Um, okay, so that was one question. What was the other question you asked? Sorry. Well, you just you had talked about the fact that people don't um, always have computers anymore. Yes, and right. So, so delivery. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Sticking you with all the hard questions today. Yeah. No, it's good. I think that for some people, uh, like the DVDs and CDs, obviously aren't going to work any anymore because a lot of computers don't have those drives anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's we get into the bigger question of whose responsibility is it to archive and save and back up files for our customers. Um, there's a lot of risk involved there, right? And it, there's again, there's no right or wrong answer, but this is something you need to consider also. Are you, are you committing to your customers that, hey, I'm going to always have a copy of these or not? They, they should know that, I think. Um, and you should oh, have a, a, you should have a you should have a plan in place about how if you're going to do it how can you do it cost effectively and on and on and on. Um, well, and and just the risk of corrupting or files that corrupt as you transfer them because I know we've had probably five to ten images since we started our business that as we continue to back them up they become corrupted and it's scary. I mean we've had thousands and thousands of images because we shoot weddings and we've got. I don't even know how many, um, but you know there have been images occasionally when someone has gone back and said, "Oh, can I get this or this?" 
and just a few, um, but it's like, no, I'm sorry, it's too late. The file has corrupted. Um, that's like the worst thing you ever want to have happen, but we only guarantee to keep their images a year because of that, because yeah. even though we've got several backups, um, you know, or, you know, if we can find it on an old backup that still is doing okay, but, you know, the lifespan of hard drives and disks are just not very long. It's just a few years, and so you've really got to keep on top of that if yeah. you do it, so yeah. good point. And, and so I think, again, I, we, every, everybody is going to want to say that this way is the best way, and I'm, I'm going to say, you know what, there is no best way yet. There's, mm -hmm. it, it really depends on your customer and how do they want it. Mm -hmm. how, here's, a, here's a story I like to share. I was a bartender for six years, and other bartenders would love to, like, I make the best martini. Like, this is how a drink is made. I was like, you're so full of yourself, dude. A drink that a customer loves, that's the right drink. I make a drink how you want to drink it, then that's the best drink. It doesn't matter if the books and the experts say this. It what the customer is right. You know, it's it's that sentiment. And so, I think that there's going to be some customers that absolutely they just want a zip drive, or have an older computer and a DVD is fine for them, or want to just a zip file and they can download to their computer. There's a number of ways to do it, and the right way is the way the customer likes. In, in my opinion, um, and then when it comes to delivery, I still think that m mobile is such a great marketing tool, and it's going to help you get more clients. But hands down, the best delivery is still the traditional print, albums, wall art. Like that is why people are coming to a professional photographer, and that's the delivery that really, really matters. We focus on delivering stuff that is not going to just sit on somebody's computer for 10 years, but it's going to actually be on display in, in their house. I think that's the, where we need to focus our energy. Yep, I agree. Um, we actually put an album in every single one of our wedding packages, mm -hmm. and it's non-negotiable because of that reason alone, because we know how life gets crazy um, and how busy people are, and the chances of them being able to retain those images and back them up throughout their entire life is really low, yeah. um, but how valuable would it be if they had an album, you know, from their grandparents' wedding that mm -hmm. showcased those highlights, you know, and so that's what we tell people is, you know, think about what that would mean to you now. The album isn't really for you, it's for your kids, it's for your grandkids, and yes, you'll, you're going to enjoy it as well, but, you know, this is something that can sit in your closet and collect dust. You know, mm -hmm. hopefully not, but it can when life gets busy and you have kids or move, right. you know, move locations or get different jobs or whatever, um, and you don't have to worry about losing those. And right. so, um, you know, I, I cannot stress some sort of physical delivery beyond yeah. just digital images as well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it doesn't, you know, even if it's, you know, and we found that an album, you know, costs about the same or less than printing out all of the images, you know, as high quality archival four by six prints or five by seven prints. Yeah. yeah. And people enjoy them more. And right. so, um, you know, so that's the way we've decided to do it. But somehow, some way, you need to be giving them, well, I shouldn't say need, but I really strongly feel that it's important to give them something that's going to last. Right. Um, and there are psychological studies out there that have proven that things that you can feel and touch and, you know, tangibly are valued higher yep. than the intangible things, like a right. photo of something on a screen isn't valued nearly as much as a photo they can hold in their hands. Exactly. So, um, so yeah. yeah. A print book is a technology that's thousands of years old, right? It's not going to change. Whereas, who knows what's going to happen in five years with mobile devices, right? And the formats and the, and the devices, that is going to keep changing like rapid fire. And in five years, who knows, maybe we're going to have like walls that are swipeable, right, with our pictures. We, we, never, we don't know. But I think that even when that happens, people are still going to value print books and print albums. That there's something tangible there that this is, I don't think it will ever go away. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I just, I think the last thing I want to touch on, um, we talked about how a client uses mobile mm -hmm. and, um, you know, some of the pros and cons of delivery of images uh, via yeah. mobile. What about, um, from a photographer standpoint, what should we be thinking about when we're looking at the various apps out there that we could be using, um, you know, 
when we're trying to pick through them? Like, what are some of the criteria you would go through to decide which is better to use than others? Yeah, good question. Um, and I don't, I, I, I don't want. We, we we promised the listeners that this wouldn't be a commercial, um, and so I won't. I know you're biased. <laughs> I'm gonna be super biased. It's 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 Sticky Elms is my baby, and I feel like I've I've weighed a lot of pros and cons at each step of the way about how we structure it. Um, I know that one big distinction still is our guarantee from the day one. I guarantee that it's gonna that Sticky Elms is gonna work for your business if you try it. It's not just the price involved in signing up for a new service. It's the time you invest in in learning how to use it, in prepping your images and delivering it. I think that it's it's fair that I offer a guarantee that look, other photographers are having success with this. That's let's make sure that um, it's it's worth their while, and and that I'm not just going to give you like a 30 day or a 14 day money back guarantee. There really isn't a deadline for for sticky albums. If you're using this and it's not working, I'll give you your money back. Five, what do you mean by seconds. not working? Like if it's not helping you, get, if it's not helping you get new clients, number one is the first metric. But if it's not, uh, like if you come, if you're done using it and you're like, you know what, this doesn't do what I thought it would do for my business. Mm -hmm. I don't want unhappy customers. I don't want people going, feeling like they've been ripped off or anything like that. I, I only want happy customers. Um, so that's number one. I think that's just a values thing for me. And I'm just really committed to making sure photographers are succeeding. I want, I, I only have a business in making photographers' businesses better. Like that's my business is to make your business better. And I don't, I don't want to structure this in a way that, that is counter to that, that I'm fully invested in that. So one of the, we do unlimited pricing, so you sign up for the year, and you can make as many of these as you want. I know that the a la carte model can seem appealing to somebody who's just starting out, mm -hmm. but a lot of my customers have 50 to 100 albums because they're making them for every single customer. So it's just something to think about. Yeah, and if you have you know, even one client a week, um, that's, that's what, 52 albums, and so with you know, I know Pass for example is twenty nine dollars. That brings you up over fifteen hundred dollars a year, um, and that's a significant amount of money um, because that's that's pure profit that is coming out of yep. your budget. Because yep. if you were using something else that was cheaper, whether it be sticky albums or Pixie Set or you know Shoot Proof or whatever it is, uh, you know you you have to you have to weigh those things and how much is it worth because you know if you have your going back to say you make five hundred dollars on a session um, I, I don't remember what the PPA benchmark is but um, they have a, a specific percentage that you're supposed to aim for as being really good and I want to say it's like forty percent give or take a few percentages and I could be very wrong on that so um, don't quote me on that but um, you know I've heard that most people are getting somewhere between thirty and forty percent of what they charge after everything is said and done so right. if you're if you're making five hundred dollars from the customer after cost of goods and all your business expenses and income taxes and everything, you only have two hundred dollars left, and that's you know best case scenario. Mm -hmm. You need to figure out okay, well if I have two hundred dollars, do I really want to take another twenty nine out of that yep. for a gallery, or do you know how much are you willing to pay per gallery? Uh, because that's over ten percent of your profits. You know, so it's a lot higher than people realize because they just say, oh, it's only a few bucks. It's you know out of five hundred. But a good chunk of that 500 is already allotted elsewhere. So you know, I, I, I've got a math degree. I used to be a really, really super dorky bean counter actuary person. So um, numbers are like my thing. And so yeah. people just don't realize if they haven't run their numbers, they just have no idea mm -hmm. uh, how much they're really losing by adding even $1,500 a year. Uh, you know, when they could be adding you know something for what it what a couple hundred dollars. What's right. what's to get uh, albums at yearly now? Yeah. yeah. And I think that if we go back to the beginning of what we're talking about, when the reality is, so the veterans, we all get up in arms about how all this, that, and the other thing is ruining the industry. It's like, there's always change. There's always going. You talk mm -hmm. to any, whether you're a lawyer or a realtor or any business, technology and other things are disrupting every industry. So we're not alone. We're not the only victim here. Toughen up. This is business, okay? And on the other side, as rookies just getting into it, 
I think there's a lot of people out there that get started and are doing this just because they love to do it. They, they're not in it to make a bunch of money. They don't ever plan on quitting their day job, and that's okay. I, I implore the, the ones that are, if, if that's you, run your numbers just for the heck of it. Just take a, a half hour, an hour to just run the numbers, and, and why not have a hobby that's not break even, but actually a business on the side that you can tuck away and take one more vacation this year because of it. Mm -hmm. I think that you're able to do that when you start to focus on the numbers, on not just having a business for fun or, or a hobby. So, Cool. So yeah. do you have any last words as we're uh, kind of wrapping up most of what I think we said we were going to talk about? Final thoughts? Um, last thing I'll say when it comes to like features and stuff like that, I love the Shoe Proof guys. I, I talk with them a lot. I love their model of commission-free print ordering, mm. and, and a lot of them will say, we've had this conversation of, of how people get to the business and, uh, and the, the allure of just doing online-only sales. Well, as you shared, whether it's in-person or assisted, remote, you've got to put in that extra work in order to really sell products, and let's not make this about just print sales. This is not what this, I, the bigger picture is about uh, what photographers can do to help educate their clients on all of the products that are out there. This is not just about 8x10s and 4x6s. Because that's that should be a small portion of your business. I think the other, it's print albums, metal, canvas, acrylic now, all of these really cool features, that's where you can really start to add value and set yourself apart. Um, so yeah, I think that uh, there's something else I was going to say. Oh, I just, I love the that with, and with Shootproof, you can set your own prices. That's the other thing. Without yeah. getting too negative about about pass, I just I just don't get it. I mean, if it's a feature thing, and it's like a beta, and eventually you're going to let people set their own prices, fine. I understand how complicated software development can be, but it just it just doesn't feel right to me. Like let let photographers choose what they like, what business model works best for them. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll end with that. Right, and I, I've heard a lot of, just to touch on that a little bit, I've heard a lot of people say, well, I actually, you know, I don't care about gift prints, I just want to sell big prints, and so it doesn't matter if I'm not making anything on these little prints, mm -hmm. but I want to know how easy is it for them to get a client who sees that you're only charging $4 for an 8x10 to pay $250 for a 16x20 canvas or whatever it is. Like, yeah, right. How would you, you know, how would you ever convince them to make that jump when you're saying, oh, they're not worth much, but then here you should pay a lot more, relatively speaking here, you know, because there's anchor points. This is another psychology thing where, you know, if you are, if if you go into something ex like with an expectation of what you will be spending. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you see on a photographer's website um, that you know prices start at a thousand dollars for whatever it is. Um, you are going to feel like a $2,000 product or package is expensive. Whereas if you see a photographer's website that says price is starting at 3000 mm -hmm. and then they have a special or whatever where they say, well, we'll do this for 2000 instead, um, that's going to seem like quite a deal. And so it's all relative to what we expect going in. And so when you have those low print prices, that are super, super low, and, you know, you have to, you know, I think you have to get, like, $50 in credit, because it's credit. You don't even make money. Like, you get 50% of it, and then you you get it as credit towards, you know, that service again, unless you hit $50, and then you can ask for cash or whatever. But to get to $50, you've got to sell so much, and people just don't buy tons and tons, generally speaking, on mobile, because what you're talking about. And then to make that point to say, okay, well, we've got this $4 price point in our mind, anything above 50 bucks is going to feel expensive, you know, whereas, you know, some people, I just, when you can set your own pricing, you can have a better, you can, you can scale it better, you can have a better starting point, a better anchor point, so that something isn't going to seem outrageous to them. Um, if, if that makes sense, but um, you know, and the other thing too is, I think photographers get hung up on the fact that um, they feel like they need to be able to afford it if they're going to charge it, 
um, and that's not always the case. So um, it looks like we lost Nate. Nate has been having some router problems today, which is why we got started a little later. So I'm just going to close us out here. So uh, I just want to thank everybody for taking some time to listen to the broadcast. Uh, I will be um, putting some of the links for the things that we talked about in this post um, after we're done. Um, and I just appreciate you listening and look forward to continuing the discussion. So if you like this, please um, click the share buttons below. Um, there's like buttons uh, for Facebook, Twitter, uh, Google+, Pinterest, whatever um, your favorite social media is. Uh, so please feel free to share it with your friends. Keep the discussion going because I think the more that we can be open about things and discuss things, um, the better off we're going to be. Um, because really, my goal is to help you. I'm not here to just bash people. I'm not just here to be negative or anything. I want to actually help you grow your business. And not everybody out there wants to do that. They'd rather make a little money um, than actually, you know, help you grow your business. So, um, yeah, feel free to leave a comment, um, and we'll keep the discussion going. So thanks. Have a lovely day. Bye.